In this Unity tutorial, we're going to make the hyperscape decay effect in Unity's shader graph. Assets, screenshots, and the product files will be available to download from Google Drive in the description. I'm using Unity 2019.4, though the version doesn't appear to be crucial, but make sure you are using the HDRP or URP in your project so you have access to shader graph. First, you want to right click in your product window, create shader PBR graph. I'm just going to call it hyperscape decay graph. Now you want to right click in your product window, create material. I'm going to call it hyperscape decay mat. Select it and in your inspector, go to the shader dropdown, shader graphs, and click the hyperscape decay graph we just created. Now let's actually create the effect by clicking on our graph and open shader editor. Here's a screenshot of the final complete graph if you want to copy it. In the Google Drive link in the description, there are more screenshots and the graph file itself too. I will explain the nodes in a second, but first, once you complete it, click on your material and assign the values. Here are the ones I used. Finally, put a model in your scene, drag the hyperscape decay mat onto it, hit play, and that's it. For those of you who want to understand how this was made, I'm going to do my best to explain the shader graph. UV mapping. This part controls how many times the tile is tiled onto the model. Also, there are some offset nodes so that the tiles fit snugly next to each other. The posturized node is like a step gradient so that the noise texture will look like squares. Noise. I used two simple noise nodes, one getting the offset and the other not. This will add randomness to the dissolve effect. You can use other noise nodes if you want and the scale can be whatever you want since the tiling is already set from the UV mapping, the scale will just shift the noise. Tile texture. For the tile texture, I just created a triangle in Photoshop that is equal in length and height. You can use any shape, but I recommend the triangle and also make sure it's extended out to all edges of the canvas to ensure it tiles correctly. There are two sample texture 2D nodes, one for the triangles pointing up and the other for the ones pointing down. Tile spawn. To spawn the tiles, I'm combining the noise output to a step node, which clamps the input values to only pure black and white, based on the time node. I use sign of time so that it loops back and forth, but this can also be set manually. Both sets of nodes are then multiplied together and added to create the combined tile set. Tile dissolve. The tile dissolve is almost identical to the tile spawn, except instead of the sign of time, I used cosine. This is because they are in different phases so that the sequence will first spawn the tiles and then after dissolve them. Tile color. To get the tiles color, I multiply the tile texture with a color node and again multiply them with the step nodes and added them together. Though there is some duplication, I kept these nodes separated because it's a bit easier for me to work with the opacity and alpha changes and the colors separately. Main texture. The main texture is just what you want your model to look like normally with no tiles. And in this case, I just use one of the default URP ones. You might need to do a bit more with this section if you have more complex models. Lerp node. The lerp node combines the main texture and the tile color using the tile spawn output to control the alpha value. This is then fed into the albedo channel of the PBR master node. Dissolve controller. The dissolve controller handles the alpha clip threshold, which affects the amount of alpha needed to make part of the texture appear transparent or opaque. And that is all of the sections. Here again is the final complete graph. Feel free to play around with the different colors and textures and modify the graph to change the effect speed or add in custom scripts to control the effect behavior. And like I said earlier, all the product files are available to download in the description and you are free to use and modify them. If there is interest, I may make another part of this tutorial where I add some emission and material properties to make it look a little bit nicer. Thank you for watching and no, this video is not sponsored by Hyperscape. I just really like the effect.